So I'm doing the anti balloon to Mega Pops on Ouch Chimps, except I get to start with the anti balloon. Surprisingly, it's not like completely free in the late game, uh, just because I don't know. Like, the tower is pretty powerful, of course, but it doesn't really seem to be worth its price. Uh, it can't really handle late game on Ouch Chimps like you would be able to with a real defense, and so. If you think about how much money you would have to spend in a real game, even if you could somehow get past the mid game and all that stuff up to affording the anti balloon, there's still pretty much no way that you would be able to win. Because, uh, like, in order to beat the game here, I am getting lots of support, like Parma Brew and two overclocks. So I just uh, skipped ahead to 81, and I am about to buy Parma Brew. I got a support Chinook because again, I'm trying to do sort of two mega pops with it. So I want to move the alchemist out of the way as soon as I can. So, so far so good, gonna get some uh, more support, like uh, Moat Glues, and then I'm gonna start getting my two overclocks. So I got the first one. And I'm gonna get primary training for the glue, uh, so that it gets an extra one pierce and more range. It's interesting, like the anti balloons projectiles kind of turn pink if it shoots fast enough, I guess, instead of red. Like with, with overclock on and perma brew and jungle drums. So DDTs already are kind of showing that they, they will be pretty hard to deal with. Uh, it's not the knockback crosspath because the plasma is so much better at dealing with uh, ceramics and stuff. Plasma gives it double attack speed, so that's something you don't want to pass up. So 95 is uh, pretty hard so far, like the DDTs are getting pretty far and there's a lot of them. So 
So I really want to get that second overclock up so I can have the full uptime and not have to worry about like round transitions where uh, they both might be down. Uh, that's not going to happen because I'm only going to use one when the second one is pretty much almost up. So for 96, I'm going to overclock as early as possible uh, and try to get it to work. I bought the second overclock, but since I just got it, it didn't have time to come up. And I had to put my support Chinook for downdraft there, uh, just helping a little bit. Got about 50 pops, but that's fine. Hopefully the ZOMGs aren't too bad. I think I might, yeah, I'm going to use the ability. 97, I know that I don't need the ability for. Uh, the first one is kind of sketchy, but the second one, it has both arms shooting at it, so it's pretty easy. And then 98, unsurprisingly, was actually pretty hard. So I'm going to get a Sabo uh, for 99, and then I'm also going to get a Spike Storm for 100. And I'm going to Perma Brew the Spike Storm. Splatter on the Mob Glues, and I think that's about it for now. So I use the ability and just the fortified BFBs are left. That's good because I think Overclock will come back up and I'll have it up for 99. The Sabo is up, so that's good. And then going to Overclock here and Sabo. Oops, forgot to use Sabo. And I'm going to get the Spike Storm. 140 because Parma Brew gives it lead popping power anyway. I used that Sabo this time, and the DDTs are like just barely getting killed in time. Uh, the big range obviously helps to snipe those ceramics. Okay, so just testing. It doesn't work without Spike Storm. So just going to use Spike Storm once and see if that's enough. And it looks like it is. So I also went back to the Spiked Balls uh, setup because I wanted to see how well the Spiked Balls would do with buffs instead of... So I made a previous video using a lot of Spiked Balls, but I was just trying to get as many of them as possible. So I didn't buy cross paths and I didn't buff them. And I just had a Brickle and Ground Zero and I used the Spiked Balls sort of as cleanup. But here, the Spiked Balls are the main source of DPS, so I've got Gwen to buff them. I've got Alchemist, and all of them are Uh, so I cut the video because I spent a couple minutes placing more spiked balls. And round 97 is going to be really easy because it's one of those rounds that has a low RBE. So like that's kind of the perfect situation for spiked balls. Uh, they would struggle the most with stuff like 98 where you just got a lot of balloons.
So 98 uh, works out fine, but uh, everything got pretty far. Like I, I was getting to the end of my defense there, so definitely uh, different from the rest of the rounds in that. And round 100 is also going to be really easy because it's just one bad. It doesn't really have that much inside it. So should probably just pop in that uh, triangle segment there. Okay, it got a little bit farther, but yeah, that's uh, the power of spiked balls when you actually buff them and buy cross paths and all that. It's a lot stronger than I had in the previous video.